Steph here and today we're going to be changing some dampers on your Katana DTG. Now the first thing to keep in mind is that this system is a double damper system if you want to call it that. In the previous video we took a tour of the facility, I walked you through the ink flow to point out potential pain points and just to reiterate briefly, you don't rip apart this machine at the first sign of a clog to get at the dampers. A lot of us are from the old school, specifically the Epson 4880 systems, where your dampers were your main pain point. They were sitting right on top of the head and if the machine goes peep or if the ink flow doesn't look right, that's the first place you look. Now, this isn't the Katana is an evolution. Um, and I die a little bit inside every time someone goes, ah, rip apart the dampers. No, you start with your cartridges always. There's a little metal filter in it there. And if your machine's been standing or as routine maintenance, this is the first place you look. That being said, when it's not the cartridges, you have to move on. And this is where the damper comes in. Now, as you can see, this is a very, very small little damper. So to go through the kit that we're going to need, this little syringe, now obviously you can use a bigger syringe, I just prefer the small one because it's easier in my hand, but the main thing I need you to note is this tip. It's the normal fat little tip, it doesn't have the adapter that most of us use. Now, the reason for that is this damp is really, really small. You're not going to be able to get the long tip in there. Yes, okay, start with the jokes already. But the point remains, you're not going to be able to get the point in there. So what you're going to be doing with this is just to make a seal on the damper because you're going to need to pull ink through it firstly to check if the damper's intact and also to make sure the ink makes it all the way through. But we're going to get there shortly. Um, besides the syringe, you're going to need your trusty number two Phillips, um, a smaller Phillips 0 0.75. I like using magnetized tips, um, again, start with the jokes guys, but it's easier to keep track of the little screws. Um, if your machine's full of ink, get some gloves, really, um, you've seen my disasters, don't do it. And you're going to need a rag to isolate the damper unit. So let's get into the damper. And if anyone was wondering about my hoodie... Alright, while I'm going to be making the bulk of this video, on an open machine I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do this with a machine with its cover on which is one of the fantastic moves that you can now there's a screw that holds the cover in place that you can reach through there and then it's simply a case of lifting the cover off which I have done here not ideal and then you've got your mounting screws and you can actually work from there so it is possible to do this with your cover on excuse this messy system please guys this is the machine that i'm going to be refurbishing it's been tortured but this is a very very important safety note before we get started especially if you're going to be changing dampers on the fly in a machine filled with ink now lower your ink lower than where your cartridges are and pull the cartridges out if your ink is lower than your cartridges they won't squirt and you can just put them aside like that this is the same principle as depressurizing the system if you've done this on your old machines like on my m2 i would open up the pressurized cartridges or on another machine you would simply take out the cartridges this is very very important because we're going to be working on wet stuff let me just take you here now this damper system you can see here's my cartridge bay and it runs the lines which go into the damper assembly so when we disconnect this we don't want ink squirting everywhere very very okay, important here i've pulled out the as you can see the ink is lower the cartridges are on top and here i've pulled out the damper unit view so you can see the colors um as you can see, this is an entire assembly, and if you buy it from Epson, it would be called the ink assembly, which would run all the way from the cartridges, the lines, and be this entire damper unit. Um, currently, I've just been changing these three dampers, um, but I would recommend changing it once a year, replacing the entire ink assembly so you can get these two. It's generally your two, it's generally your white dampers that clog first, and 
also tend to be the ones that give you the right. most hassle. Here we have the carriage from the top. Now, first thing would be loosening that screw, um, which I've already done here, and then just lifting off the cover. Then you have this mounting plate, this part over here, which has got one, two, three, four screws, which I've already taken out, and I'm just going to pop this one out. Okay. Now, I've already shown you how I'm putting my screws aside, and I've already snapped a picture of this. So you, the main issue here is to work very, very gently. So you want to unclip those cables very gently and then you can take the mounting plate off now this is going to come along with me and you just want to get that out of your way there so this piece of plastic just move it out of your way fantastic then we've isolated the damper units which is this plastic casing you can see there plastic casing and right down there you'll see that there's a area of your screw um, there's one point on the one side and one on the other side so you can loosen those screws this is one of the reasons why I like working with a magnetic tip screwdriver they are quite fine and it's a problem if it falls into your machine now once you've loosened that you can gently lift off the damper unit now again taking care to extricate it from there and turn it around like this because if anything's gonna come out it's gonna come out from that side now what I like to do when I'm working on this is then to put the rag around it and this is where I will be working, taking care not to get any crap all over the inside okay, of my pull machine. This out. Let's just quickly do a tour. This on top here would be a little motor. Then we have the lines as they come through into the selector plate, um, which you can see here is essentially looks like a lunchbox lid with little lines running through it for the ink to get to the dampers now you can see that the lines are quite thick leaning leading into this very narrow selector plate so it's important to always prime your dampers once you've put new ones in to make sure that it makes it all the way through now because there's a motor when you change this damper you want to because if anything's going to come out it's going to come out there you've already removed the cartridges so they shouldn't but you never know so always be very very careful when you turn this unit around you'll see that there's clips on the back so you can just take your finer tipped screwdriver and make sure that clip is loose and you can pop out the damper from here now like I said I always hold them like this in case anything drips it's not dripping towards my motor and then you can just in the same vein pop a new damper in you got the little clip and voila your dampers in now like I said I would replace this whole thing once a year uh, mainly for that horrible uh, magenta and black maneuver that you have going there but this way is perfect to change your white dampers and then it's very important once you've installed the new damper to take your syringe and just connect it there and pull ink through this is not only to make sure that the integrity of the damper itself is not compromised because if the plastics perforated in any way you're going to have a problem but to also make sure that the ink makes it through the selector plate and you don't actually have a blockage there that you need to deal with now I'm going to put this guy back once you've installed your new damper like I said that's a seal and you can just make sure everything is clean. If you spilt any ink, take a good look around and make sure everything is clean. And then you can reinsert this unit. So as noted, we've reinserted our cartridges, primed our damper unit. And now we're putting it back. We haven't raised our ink yet because we don't want anything spilling out. So you would just firmly press that down into position. You can feel it clip onto the manifold points and you would reinsert your screws on the sides now I just want to mention this as a a little what do you want to call it a, a tech go-to do not 
be very, very careful not to over tighten your screws. So you're literally just going to turn until it stops and you're going to stop right there. By over tightening things, you can actually pull components out of alignment and give yourself a lot of trouble. So you're going to be putting the two screws back in the unit. So this cable goes underneath and the mounting plate and the four screws there and reconnect. That's it. So um, I hope all of that made sense. I promise my videos will get better as we go on. This is not my strong point, but I will also follow with a technical document with a step-by-step -step on how to everything we covered in this video. So to very quickly recap, key points. Before you ever work on your machine, you power down fully, unplug it from the wall. Make sure your hands are clean or wear gloves. Um, in this case with the dampers, you will lower your ink supply to reduce the pressure and you will take your cartridges out of your machine. Then you can work on the damp unit. Once you've changed your dampers, you will put your ink cartridges back. You will not raise the ink, however. You don't want serious pressure coming through. Put the cartridges back, use the fat syringe to fill the dampers and then replace the unit. Then you can raise your ink and running machine. Good luck and I'll see you again soon.